Well, yesterday, the U.S. Supreme Court agreed to hear a challenge to Tennessee's law passed last year that protects minors from gender mutilation surgeries and experimental drugs. Now, this comes after the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit struck down a preliminary injunction against the law, causing the Biden administration to appeal the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, could this be the case that sets the precedent for the constitutionality of the SAFE Act bills protecting children in states throughout the country? Now, as we've talked about since we were a part of uh, introducing the first bill in Arkansas a few years back, we now have uh, 25 states that have these laws, common sense laws, protecting children. I mean, children, we don't trust them to drive. We don't trust them to get a tattoo. Uh, we don't trust them to vote until they're over 18, but yet we'll allow them to make a decision that will alter their bodies for life. Joining me now to discuss this is Tennessee State Representative Jason Zachary, who was a co-sponsor of this bill. He represents the 14th District of Tennessee. Uh, Representative Zachary, welcome to Washington Watch. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Tony. So we've seen similar SAFE acts, as I mentioned, passed throughout the country, over half the states. Describe the process um, that it took to pass this legislation in your state and why your state has been challenged. Sure. So in Tennessee, we have a supermajority, a, a Republican supermajority, and we have made protecting children a priority, Tony. And it goes back to my first term when I, when I was first elected in 2016, where we began to take steps uh, to protect life, 48 hours, 20 weeks, admitting privileges. Uh, then we took the step with the heartbeat bill. And then in 2019, we packed, passed the Human Life Protection Act, which is the strong, now the strongest pro-life piece of legislation in the country, where we have effectively <clears throat> eliminated abortions in Tennessee, all elective abortions. And so, again, it's been a priority in Tennessee. And as this social contagion of gender dysphoria has swept across the country over the last couple of years, when I was first elected, this wasn't even a major issue. And it has become an issue over the last four or five years. As this began to sweep across the nation, uh, we looked at it and we took the steps of protecting uh, the integrity of girls' restrooms, protecting the integrity of high school and collegiate sports. And the next step was, a, was to protect minors. Again, as you were said, it's common sense. We took the steps to protect children from irreversible procedures, gender mutilation procedures, and also these harmful drugs that they take that keep them from having children to completely alter their voice, completely change the, the, the dynamics and the genetics of the, of the child. And again, we're talking about children. And so, as you mentioned, it's the same line I always use. We don't allow a child to get a tattoo until they turn 18. We don't allow them to carry a gun. Numerous things are, they can't even buy Sudafed, my goodness, until they're 16, but yet, the left wants you to think that they're qualified to be able to make these terrible gender decisions, these life-altering decisions. And so uh, our majority leader picked up the mantle, our majority leader in the House and the Senate. Uh, they really worked with our caucuses in both chambers to, to make sure we had the support, which we obviously did. The only pushback that we got was from the most radical uh, in our in, in, in the other party and our, our Democrat colleagues. But we did have some colleagues on the other side join us because, again, this is common sense. We've made protecting priority. We've made protecting children a priority. And this is other red states have done the exact same thing. As you said, there's 25 that have done that now. And as we continue to have these destructive and adversarial policies come out of Washington and come from the left, red states, conservative states have to continue to firewall ourselves and protect the people of our states from such, such destructive policies and these radical agendas that are being pushed by the left. Well, Representative Zachary, what was I don't say unique, but it was somewhat unique about your state is that the leadership pushed this. The leadership was all in on this. You've got a great governor. Governor Lee's doing a great job. Your attorney general says, hey, I welcome the fight. We, we will defend this. It sounds like everybody there in Tennessee is on board in protecting this law so that you can protect children. That's right. You're exactly right, Tony. And, and, and Tony, it makes a difference. Even under Governor Haslam, who, who was uh, the predecessor to Governor Lee, uh, Governor Haslam loved the Lord. He was a, a Christ follower. It's easy to play the God card in the South. I represent Tennessee. We're in the buckle of the Bible Belt. 
But man, Governor Governor Lee loves Jesus. Our Majority Leader William Lambert is. A, we we prayed yesterday for that. We got on a call yesterday and prayed yesterday for our AG. I serve with some people who love the Lord, and this is a calling for us to serve in the state legislature. And so I know some of the other states that we've talked to. It's kind of the same thing. So it makes a difference when you're working for an audience of one and you're not worried about what the blowback will be. And we really did have that, have a, a, a cohesive, unified effort from our caucus. But again, it was led by leadership. Speaker Sexton, who's our speaker, is typically considered one of the most conservative speakers in the country. We tackle these to tough social issues that some, even some red states don't like to tackle. But in Tennessee, we, we, like to, we like to go back and forth with Governor DeSantis that sometimes we beat him and sometimes he beats us. Um, but these are steps that we're always going to take to protect children. And again, just from a believer's perspective, because again, that's the way I'm always going to operate. We recognize as believers, the enemy is looking to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10.10. 10. And so we have to do all we can to take the necessary steps to protect our most vulnerable, because the enemy is always going to keep coming. Again, we're yeah. winning on the issue of life in Tennessee. We're winning now protecting children from these terrible, horrible procedures. And we're just going to keep moving forward again, because it's the right thing to do. And because, again, we're working for an audience of one. Well, Representative Zachary, you bring up some other great issues I wish we had time to talk about, and, and that is believers getting in the arena. I, I testified uh, back when I was in the Louisiana legislature in Tennessee 20-plus years ago. Like Louisiana, Tennessee has changed. It's become a much redder uh, mm -hmm. state, with, and, it, it, and that comes with godly leadership willing to step into the arena. So it's, it's encouraging to hear, it's encouraging to see, and I, I want to thank you for joining us today, and thanks for your leadership there in Tennessee. Thank you, and I would encourage your audience to pray for our AG as he prepares to defend our state and really take a step for all states about protect, for protecting children. Absolutely, and, and we certainly will be following up on this as it develops further into the fall. Representative Zachary, thanks so much for joining us today.